I'm really interested in DNS, so I'm going to take some time here to uh, plug uh, a book that I just picked up yesterday for $9.99, just under $10, a Kindle digital edition book called DNS Security, In-Depth Vulnerability Analysis and Mitigation Solutions. It is excellent. Um, it's by Anestis Karasaridis, and the uh, it covers an introduction to DNS security and the importance of DNS security, chapter one. It has an overview of DNS, the protocol and its architecture, how it works. Um, it has a section on DNS specific vulnerabilities, as well as how to monitor and detect uh, security breaches related to DNS and um, prevention, protection, mitigation of DNS service disruption and chapter six, DNS sec and beyond. Now I've only read the first two chapters, but I'm gonna rec and a little bit of the third chapter, but I'm gonna recommend the book just on what I've read so far. It's just excellent. So definitely you wanna see it, check this out. So it has an excellent page right here with uh, different uh, types of resource records that you'll find in DNS. And it has great diagrams here about how uh, DNS uh, forward and reverse uh, queries work and um, how the structure of the domain name system and how it's organized. It answers a lot of questions that I've been wondering for a long time and I could find a lot of answers to them in here. So I really like it. It goes over all of the flags and information in the header and how it's built. And it also talks about things that, um, that I didn't expect it to talk about like Anycast addresses and the role of Anycast addresses in DNS and DNS servers. For instance, with Anycast addresses, multiple servers could share the same IP address and then you are resolved or your request would go to the nearest available device, the nearest Anycast address or the nearest device that was willing to respond to that Anycast address. So that's what happens um, in some cases with uh, root DNS servers. And that would make sense since there's only 13 root DNS servers, but it's actually uh, distributed and there's many, many more servers that actually respond to it, hundreds of servers uh, across the world, um, across the globe. And uh, any cast addressing is one method in which you could distribute that load so that it's not just 13 servers on those 13 IP addresses. So I'm um, just uh, really pleased with this book. So I'm going to definitely recommend it here. Now, some of the things that happen in this book that are worth checking out is just some of the things that, that, he, that he does and that you could do yourself. So for instance, as he's exploring DNS, I'm going to go to this uh, virtual machine here. I've got a Linux Mint virtual machine and I'll just start off with a dig request. And if you just type in dig and hit enter, it actually looks up the root DNS servers. So um, you can see here that the request, the, the request here um, is blank. So it says this is a internet class uh, requesting name servers, but the domain is blank. So it responds with the root servers. So these are the 13 root servers of DNS. He also talks about how how come there's 13 root DNS servers and it was built because of the original um, the original message size being a maximum of 512 bytes and they needed to make the uh, the requests under a certain size and this is how many records they could get for for 512 bytes so some of the history of the DNS is also talked about in here which is excellent as well as all the types of answers so I thought that was pretty good and the flags he goes over all of these. For instance, this is a flag for query, uh, recursion desired, and recursion available. The meaning of the dot at the end of these um, different servers or these domain names for these root uh, DNS servers, the end dot meaning that this is a fully qualified domain name. Also, if we do this, and let's see here, we could put in this dig here. He also talks about putting in a dig command, and then putting in the address of the local DNS server. So I can put in my local, my gateway, which is also my DNS, local DNS server, and put in the same command, except this time, it's basically requesting the records from, from this local DNS server. 
And when you do that, you get much more information. For instance, it's, it's the same thing, a request without a domain name, which leads to the root DNS servers here, there's their names. And then, but it also has this additional section where they're resolved to their IP addresses. So this is the A record and IP address of these root DNS servers, as well as the quad A record IPv6 addresses of these uh, root DNS servers. And notice that it looks like now all of these DNS servers have an A record in IPv4 and a an, uh, quad A record in IPv6. So that's pretty interesting too. He also does something that's kind of cool. He does a dig command in the book and passes uh, a, a domain name called www.example.com. And I didn't know you could do this, but this is pretty cool. I'll put that one in there. And then you can see here the reply. So query one, answer one, uh, not authoritative, uh, but an additional message. So here's what it looks like, the question, the query, uh, www.example.com dot, so this is fully qualified, um, internet class, a record, and then the answer with, a, uh, with the IP address. So that's pretty cool. Let's do that same thing, except this time I'll also put in at 192.168.8.1, which is my local DNS server, and I should be able to get more information here, and I do. So notice that this uh, example.com has these uh, name servers. So this is a, a request, an A record, and the A record response with IP address, but then also under the authority section, name server records, and these name servers are the authoritative name servers for the www.example.com domain name, the IANA servers IP addresses. So that was pretty interesting. We could take, let's see here, let's take one of these um, servers and do a reverse query. So we'll do a dig-x and put in the IP address here. and we'll see what we get here. So this is a reverse query, and the question the book was able to answer for me is why in the IP address the numbers are reversed in the reverse queries or reverse lookup zones. And the reason is reversing the IP addresses makes it match the structure of the domain name, and domain names are structured from specific, like subdomains, and server names and subdomains, to more general, where you have like the top level domains, uh, like .com, which are very general, and so the IP address is the opposite, so to, to set up that same um, structure, you reverse the IP address, and now you have from more specific to more general, and um, and that way matching uh, the way a domain name is. So that's pretty interesting.